Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Force here covering new releases for the week of November 18th to the 24th. Uh, now as always, there's more new releases than what I'm mentioning here. I'm just going to focus on the most notable and the ones that I think are least interesting, either interesting good or interesting bad. Uh, let's get things started here on Monday, November the 18th. We've got the early access release of Kingdoms Rise. This is a multiplayer fantasy combat game that features a deep 360 degree sword fighting system as well as has magic abilities. Uh, in the game, you get to customize your characters through a multitude of choices in armors, swords, spells, ranged weapons, and more. And the game also allows you to create a knight with the fighting style unique to you alone. So there's essentially a whole bunch of different weapons and abilities that you can choose from to craft the type of uh, dueling character that you want. So it's a game that focuses, it appears to focus on like 1v1 dueling. There's also team play where you can queue up with a team and play against other teams. Conceptually, I love it. Visually, I love the way the game looks. Uh, this is going to be a title that really comes down to the gameplay and whether or not it's responsive, fluid, and impactful, I think will determine the success of a game like this. I'm trying to be, get myself into the early access, and if I do, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to provide some coverage because I'm actually quite interested in this title. Also on Monday, we've got the Steam release of Signal Ops. This game did already technically released earlier in the year, but it's now come to Steam, so I thought it warranted another look. Uh, this is a first-person strategy game that has you commanding multiple agents simultaneously as you carry out missions. The game blends elements of a tactical shooter, stealth strategy, and puzzle-solving gameplay. Uh, it's priced at $14.99. This is another title, like, I love the way it sounds. Unfortunately, though, like I said, it it was already released, and the reviews were pretty mediocre uh, conceptually, and the setting and all that stuff, people seem to really enjoy it, but the gameplay, I guess, just came off as a little clunky. I saw one review said it, it felt like trying to paint your hallway through your mailbox, which I don't even know. It's just kind of a funny analogy, but uh, yeah, apparently the the gameplay just came off as a little bit clunky. Maybe they made improvements, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna try to get in touch with the developer anyways, because I think I'd like to give this game a look as well. Now on to Tuesday, November the 19th, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. This is the PC release of the game, the sixth main installment in the Assassin's Creed franchise that is set in the Caribbean during the Age of Piracy, and this is around the 18th, uh, early 18th century. Now, this game reviewed pretty well when it released on consoles, or current-gen consoles, about a month ago, so hopefully the PC port comes out uh, fairly well. You know, this, the Assassin's Creed franchise, I've always liked and I've played, well, let, me, let me rephrase this, I played the first, I think the first and second Assassin's Creed and I enjoy them, but I did not keep up with the series at all. And I've heard this is pretty good, I've heard people uh, think it's just, you know, it's a pretty decent Assassin's Creed game. So there you go, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag for $59.99. Also today, Need for Speed Rivals. Uh, the open world racing game and also the debut of Need for Speed title on next gen consoles. Gameplay is supposed to be similar to Need for Speed Hot Pursuit in the sense that it does feature a comps versus racers element. Uh, some of the game's main features include All Drive, which is the sort of the multiplayer mode in which players and their friends always share the same game. There's no longer that distinction between single and multiplayer. There's also a comps versus racers mode uh, where you, you know, comps versus racers and car customization, which has come to be expected. Now, speaking with Total Biscuit and also looking at some of the just general consensus online, looks like this game's got a few issues on the PC. Number one is that the game is locked at 30 frames per second, which is unfortunate for a PC game expected on some consoles. Uh, and if you try to play it at 60 frames per second, it plays at double speed and basically becomes super broken and just has some major, major issues. Uh, the game also has unskippable cutscenes and evidently a bunch of hand holding. And uh, I think Total Biscuit did put up a video this afternoon, so if you like sort of a more in-depth look at the problems or the issues that people are raising with the PC version. You should head on over to his channel and I give that a look. But yeah, this isn't uh, this isn't getting reviewed too well, at least at this current point in time. Uh, coming up next on Tuesday's releases, we've got Adventure Time Explore the Dungeon because I don't know. <laughs> so this is an Adventure Time game. I, you know, not really my thing, but let, let's go over it. Princess Bubblegum summons Finn and Jake to the Candy Kingdom to investigate a rash of thefts and kidnappings that have plagued her kingdom. I have no idea what any of that means. Uh, this is an action-adventure game where you explore up to 100 floors of a secret dungeon and there's also 20 different weapons and 40 abilities uh, this is 
just fan service to people who like Adventure Time, I would assume. Uh, next up, new releases on Tuesday, Montagu's Mount. Montague's Mount is a disturbing psychological thriller set in the bleakness of an abandoned Irish island. The gameplay itself focuses on exploration and puzzle solving. Uh, this is the first part of a two-part story, and it's also got some Oculus Rift demo within it, and it will be featuring full support in the future. Uh, you know, explore the island, uncover the mystery, solve some puzzles, kind of creepy. I like creepy things, so that's why I wanted to mention it. And then last up for new releases that are notable this week, we have got Young Justice Legacy an action RPG based on the Young Justice TV series. Uh, here you get to play as 12 different heroes and battle 12 devious villains. It's supposed to bridge the story between Season 1 and Season 2 of a show that I have never seen. Uh, nothing that I'm likely to check out, especially given the $39.99 price point. But uh, fan service to those of you who like the Young Justice TV series, it could turn out all right. It's probably going to turn out to be garbage because these types of games based on TV series or even movies... You just don't have really a, a good track record, do they? No, not at all. Okay, so that does it for this week's new releases on the PC. Let's wrap up by talking about my planned content. Uh, yesterday, I took a look at Blackguards, which was an early access uh, turn-based RPG game. Pretty interesting. Uh, lots of things I, I, I really like about it. There's some things that I think... Uh, some players are not going to enjoy so much. Uh, we, just some weird systems in it. But overall, I thought it was a, a pretty decent experience. And I'm continuing to play through and continuing to enjoy it. Uh, so we've got that coverage. If you missed it, go give it a look. Also, Kingdoms Rise, another early access game that I'm really, really intrigued by. I would really like to learn more about, and I'd also like to check out Signal Ops. Now, obviously, we've got the releases of Assassin's Creed 4 and Need for Speed Rivals. Need for Speed Rivals, it's a game that I probably wouldn't spend much time with, and since it's getting bad, bad reviews for the PC version, I'm not going to waste my money. And in terms of Assassin's Creed 4, that's a game that I probably will pick up at some time. I just don't know if it's going to be this week because uh, I think I'm going to be busy probably playing through Kingdom's Rise. And I've also been spending a bunch of time revisiting some MMOs. I spent some time with Terra, and I'm actually re-downloading Guild Wars 2 right now. So that may turn out to be some coverage on the channel. Uh, we'll have to see how I feel about that. I've really, you know, over the past few months... There was a time where I was all about covering just like everything that came out on the PC, but I just realized it was it was very very time consuming, and I don't think it was doing the people following this channel justice because they weren't necessarily things that I was actually interested in. And there's good and bad interested. Sometimes I'm interested in a game because it might be terrible, and I think it'd be funny to give it a look. But I like to spend a lot more time in games that I'm actually intrigued by and that I'd love to cover just because I enjoy playing them. And so that's what I'm trying to do. So for that reason. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not covering every single thing in terms of gameplay footage, uh, but I do always want to let you guys know, and that's why we have the Force Feed as well as this new releases video. And now that I'm done rambling on, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, keep watching and keep owning.